and was on Supernatural. And uh, those two dudes have been amazing for the community of, of, of Vancouver where they shoot. And uh, they've kind of like, a lot of, a lot of really cool people came out of being a guest star out of, out of Supernatural. And so I just, I, I just really love being a part of these, you know, really cool iconic shows and I get to have a little piece in it and get to, uh, get to really explore the characters. It's really awesome. I mean, you have a lot of concurrent things going on at once yeah, right now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So uh, one thing that you know that everyone here knows that you have coming up is uh, is a uh, Snowpiercer. Yes. Which is interesting because it was a film, and now it's being turned now it's a series. Now it's a TV series inspired by the film, and um, and the, the original director won for Parasite the Oscar right, this year. Yeah. So we've been getting a little bit more buzz that we're kind of doing that spinoff and. It's been great. It's going to be an amazing show. I haven't seen anything yet, and we've already shot almost two seasons. Well, and, and I heard that it hasn't it hasn't even been released, but it's but it's already been renewed. Yeah, it was renewed for a second season. That's before right. Even being released, That's right. Amazing. It's great, and the trailer is amazing, and and um, the storylines and, and the, the 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 classes that are a part of the train have been. You know, something about where our climate is right now. So it's it's really great. It's interesting, and and timing wise, it worked out because I got to shoot Snowpiercer, and then I go right into season five of uh, Van Helsing. So I'm really excited about that show for sure. Wow. So what is it like doing um, a, a TV series based on a film that that came out not that long ago? How is that? Well, you get some sort of grounding of what the the inspiration and ideas, and because it's such a like out there story to begin with, and so that the ori the original film just kind of blanketed it for us, where we could be inspired by it but not duplicate it. Mm. Um, so it really helped being uh, having that kind of template. Wow, that's amazing. Yeah. So, um, any, any questions? Anyone have any questions? Just raise your hand, and I will. Oh yeah, go ahead. So, who is it you pal around most with on the set of Van Helsing that you know? Um, yeah, honestly, it's it's a I love everybody a part of the show for sure. Like, and I have a blast with everyone. Michael Eklund came up and he did he played uh, Abram Van Helsing, and him and I always hang out. Um, and when Missy was on the show, her and I were always hanging out and and doing practical jokes on each other all the time. And Jonathan Scarf, uh, who who plays who's he playing? Absolutely. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> he's uh, he's. A really great dude. Every one of part of the show has been great. Awesome. Yeah, man. Oh, and Jen, Jen Kaminsky, who's the makeup artist. Okay. Her and I do practical jokes on each other all the time. So <laughs> yes. She's the one. Yes. yes. So the character that you play on Valentine Helsing is he's 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 Alex out there. He there is nothing subtle to him <laughs> except maybe his devious plans. That's it. But. Do you ever get told in directions, okay, we need you to add just a little more camp? Oh, no. It, we, we, we've never had that, but sometimes we've had, um, okay, do you not get the joke? I'm like, well, what do you mean? I'm reading it. Oh, that's the joke. Okay, so <laughs> kind of the way you then tell it, say that line is understanding that there was a joke playing on from season one type thing. But we never, performance wise, they we're, we we pretty know the we know the kind of outlay of the land, and they've been really great with letting us play for sure. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Alex, over the past couple of days, my daughter and I both have met you. You're, you're a class act all the way. Oh, so thank I'd you. Like to just thank you for that. Uh, my first question is: I was reading in your biography that you're a third generation amateur boxer. Yeah, that's you right. Know, uh, well, I'd like to talk about the or hear about the first two generations just a little. Sure. But then, you know, when did you get into that? When did you finish that? Mm -hmm. And why didn't you stay with that? Oh, that's a great question. <laughs> All right, so I have three generations of boxers in my family. My grandfather was a boxer, and then obviously he got his sons into it. My dad, my dad's brother, and my dad went on to be a European champ, and and then he during a fight cracked his leg right before the '68 Olympics. And then that's when, and this was in the old Yugoslavia, and that's when they moved to Canada to start a family. And, and he, you know, right out of the womb, I was throwing punches. So he, he was like <laughs> teaching me right out of the gate. Um, but what's interesting is we never really had a great relationship growing up. So if I was going to box, 
that meant I had to spend more time with him. <laughs> so I moved towards music and I moved towards arts because he doesn't want anything to do with that. <laughs> and then it got to the point as I got older, and even though I would go boxing and kind of like, he would get upset if I, if I didn't take him to the boxing gym, so I wouldn't say anything. And then in my band that I played all over the country, I would sneak into, into boxing gyms in whatever city we were playing in just to go boxing. And then it got to the point where I wanted to build a stronger relationship with my dad. I felt like I was a little bit more mature and experienced. And then I asked him to train me for, um, for the year coming up to make it to the 2000 Olympics. And I won state championships and stuff and on my way and then I ripped my shoulder out at the pre-Pan American Games. And that's what kind of halted it because I, was, I started playing in my band well, I was playing in my band, and those guys were more like, um, you can't go and box, because you may break your hand, and then everyone's out of a job. <laughs> so I would, I would go anyway, but I wouldn't tell <laughs> And uh, And so from that, uh, I, got ca I got cast in a show while I was playing on stage. And then I really realized that I, you know, there's more that I want to do, and my shoulder coming out before the Olympics, and that means another four years. So I just really love the idea of competing, but I love the idea of telling stories more. So I just do it for recreation more than anything, and it's some of my, my acting stuff, and, and that's kind of the tra trajectory of that. Awesome. If you don't mind, one more question. Yeah. Uh, also read that you were a stunt double uh, for a number of years, and I made the remark last night that, well, being a big star now, he probably still doesn't do his own stunts. But then she showed me one of the first things that I had seen you in, and that was the Republic of Doyle, and your wrestling match with Scott Grimes. Yeah, yeah. And, uh, oh, has so anybody else seen that? Would you like to? Uh, okay, so here, here's the deal. So I got cast in this thing, Republic of Doyle, and it was a naked fight scene. And, and so I'm like, oh, this is this is ridiculous. And so what they usually do is get you to put on almost like a bikini thing. Right, and we're covering your boys, and then as they were shooting it, they said, "You know what? We, we can't. We can see the thing on the outline of your outside of your body, so we're gonna have to lose the the bikini thing." And I was like, "And what?" So, they, so we put a sack on, and the fight scene. One scene has to be where like my butt is this far away from his face. And I'm just embarrassed. I'm like, I am so sorry, dude. I am so sorry. And a couple times I've wiped them with my boys and I was like, I am so sorry. So every time I see him, we always we always joke about it. But at the time I was quite embarrassed, but then I got into it. So when he jumped up and started wiping his face, that was real. That shit was real. He was like, get his balls off my face right now. Great question. But with the stunt double thing, um, I started, so I got cast in a film just as an actor, and I was really enjoying it, and it's in my small town of Winnipeg, Manitoba. And the stunt community there is quite small. So the stunt coordinator saw me and he's never seen me before. And he goes, we have no big guys on our stunt team. Would you like to come out? And so I would be playing my band till 2 a.m. And then I would just go over to the movie where he was at and basically be a gopher just because I wanted to be around it. I tasted it already with, with getting cast in my first thing. And then I was just like, this is really interesting. And then, you know, started getting into stunts and stunt actor stuff. And then that's when I realized, uh, you know, and I, and I doubled a few people, but it was mostly, you know, the, the, the bouncer that gets in the fight with the lead type thing. And then as time went on, I wanted to just tell more stories. And so I got away from that. But I have so much respect for anybody that wants to be in the stunt industry. And, and I try to do all my, all my fight scenes. And uh, what I don't want to do is fall. I hate falling. So that's when I'll get my double to go, you, you fall, I'll fight. <laughs> Um, but yeah, so I, try, I I steered away from it to to hopefully get to the chance to tell stories in different films. Very good. Yeah. Thank you. So you had mentioned that you you I mean you're very busy right now. You have a lot of things going on. Mm -hmm. um, you mentioned that you are um, building a film studio in your hometown. Yeah. Yeah. Um, 
So Winnipeg, Manitoba has has some amazing, talented people. Um, it's one of the best theater companies in in, um, in Canada. It's the middle of Canada, and they have the best best tax credit in, in North America. Not just not just in Canada, North America. It's at sixty five percent. And so it's me and a, group, a few people from Los Angeles: Eric, Melissa, and uh, Bill. And we're partnering with some other people to bring a $60 million film studio to Manitoba. And why I'm so passionate about it is because it is my hometown. It got me started. Um, I would love to give back in a way, just to, if I'm a part of it in some way, that are creating jobs all around all around Manitoba and Winnipeg, and you know, for the lumber yard making sets or clothing, to producing original content and renting out studio space to Netflix or Amazon and just really building the infrastructure and, the, and, and, and giving jobs to people from the area that want to be a part of the arts. So I'm excited about that. Oh, that's really amazing. Yeah. That's yeah, a nice little gesture of good work to give back to well, you. Well, it, it, it's, I can hire myself. So yeah, it works out for both. And uh, you mentioned you have a film coming up, right? Yeah, there's a film um, at Mammoth that's playing literally in about five hours at the Mammoth Film Festival called The Color Rose. Um, that I executive produced and started in, and I just been, finished a film called Chain, which I'm really proud of and scared of because I have no idea how it turned out because it was something totally different from what I've done, um, and they were great enough to let me put, be a part of it, and I'm really looking forward to that. So are you interested in doing, a, you know, you've kind of mentioned how your career transitioned and how you got started kind of in, in, uh, in acting. Um, do you see yourself transitioning to be more behind the camera in the future? Yeah, I do. I mean, I think, you know, I love what I do and I love that I can tell stories and, and people that people want to see me tell these stories. And that's a, a huge gift that the audience is there and, and is allowing me to be a part of this storytelling. Um, but I love the idea of a team and creating and everyone working in a synergetic way where all of a sudden we're, we've made a movie and it takes hundreds of moving pieces to make it happen and I love being part of that whole process. So yeah, I, I definitely see myself being a, being a part of it behind the scenes, but I, uh, if I can keep on going in front of the camera, I will. Awesome, yeah. awesome. Now you, obviously there's a difference between film and TV and how you, you, you talked a lot about storytelling and how mm -hmm. important that is to you. Um, do you find that being part of these TV series have been running for several seasons if you get more of an opportunity to do that? Well, it's, it's interesting because you're a part of a moving train already. So when you go in, Literally. yeah, yeah, no kidding. <laughs> when you're a part, like for instance, um, with Supernatural, and those guys have been doing it for 15 years, and they're good friends, and they're good friends with each other on and off camera. It's really great to see their friendship. And they kind of set the tone of how I've always wanted to be, because when I started late in, in my career, I started in my early 30s, mid-30s. So I had a completely other life before that. And to come into a different thing where I didn't know if I was gonna fit in, am I gonna like it, am I gonna be good enough? Like that, all those questions when you're trying to start something new. And when I went on to do a guest star, my first guest star with Supernatural Boys, they. Uh, they were so gracious and so nice and so welcoming. It made me feel like they were a host and they were greeting me. And I've been a part of other films or series that have been around for a while where you just walk on to do a guest star and you feel like it's your first day at school and you're kind of freaking out and no one cares that you're there. So you just want to do your job and go. But there's this piece of you that goes, man, you could have been more nice, you know? like. And I don't know if I really feel like I want to do this as a job anymore, if that's the way I'm going to be treated. And then you get Jared and Jensen, and you go, yes, I want to do this job and hopefully be in a position where I can be a lead on the show and be a host just like them, because that's intuitively how I want to be. Mm. And they showed me that it's possible to be nice in this industry and, yeah. and really kind of move further. Oh, that's great. That's it. And everybody here who's met you I, and, and knows that you are a super nice guy in real life. That's <laughs> So that's awesome. Do you have any more questions? I saw a hand go up. Yeah. Uh, what's your favorite impractical joke that you played on your fellow cast members? <laughs> so if you didn't hear me, so what's your favorite impractical joke you played on one of your cast members? <sighs> There's so many. <laughs> <laughs> I, re I really, I really like to take the piss out of a lot of friends. Like our showrunner Jonathan 
for so we had a showrunner Neil Abute for Van Helsing, and then Jonathan was a producer on the show, and this would be his first showrunning gig last year. And we were all really proud of him that he got the opportunity to show showrun. And I was like, I can't just let that go. So first day of set, I literally was at home cutting out like face pictures of him and making putting putting little sticks on it. And I gave like 200 pieces of his face to every piece of the cast. So the first day, everywhere you looked was was Jonathan's face, which got him really embarrassed. And then it got to the point where people were like putting it on the dead people on Van Helsing. And I was like, this joke is the most, like I, it went all year, like we put it everywhere. So um, that was one of my favorites. And Jen, our, 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 our makeup artist, her and I always go back and forth and, and scare each other. She put a, uh, a, a, a doll almost like a Chucky doll, but was totally more terrifying in my trailer with like blood written on the mirror saying, I can see you. And, and I'm like, what is going on? And then another time she had like a full grown teddy bear in my, in my makeup chair. So I thought it was, oh wow, well, this is great. But somebody was in it and scared me. So she's good at it. Wow, that's amazing. You guys yeah. have such a great rapport with each other. Yeah, it's pretty great. Is there any type of role that you have that you really want to play that you haven't had a chance to do yet, or a, a type of character? Yeah, it's really it's interesting. Like I'm, I've been really lucky with doing things that are out of the box, and and it's interesting because you don't know. Like to sit back and wait for a role to come to you is very. I, I find that difficult. I like to go after the roles that I want to go after, or even create them. So there was a time where I was getting, oh, always getting cast as the bad guy. And I remember going like, you know, I don't want to always be the bad guy. It's fun, but I don't want to always be the bad guy. And, and so my friend and I, uh, Tom O'Pennekin, who's on Battlestar Galactica, him and I are best friends. And we decided to do a film called The Hostage, a uh, short film where a friend of ours, we were telling him, what both talking about at the time, and he wrote this piece for Tom and I, Brent Cote, and uh, and it basically we flipped roles. So Tom will play the villain; he never gets to play the villain, and I play not the villain guy, uh, the quote unquote hero. And if we were going to get caught, cast out of Hollywood, they would have given us the roles that we always get. Mm. And so because we flipped it, and just throwing that energy out there, and you worked at it. You're proud of the, the work that you've done, and now it's in the ether, it's just out there. Um, then I just started getting better, like more, you know, good guy roles, and, and roles that were more complex instead of just being, you know, the, the villain for one thing. And say, and then Tom started getting roles where he played more of the villain. So we created that, I feel, for us, when we just threw it out there and actually made the work. And then I was getting hired with the stuff that I wanted to get hired with. Uh, I'm not sure what the question was anymore. I just started talking. No, it was, it was uh, if you had a chance to, is there a role or a type of role you haven't gotten yeah, so I, want to? Right, and I, and I think I've, I've done a lot of them. I, like, I would love to do, you know, a, a, a Rocky type role, mm. but from the other side, like, as in, like, you know, the, the dude's last chance at, you know, winning a fight or doing a fight, because I'm not as young as I used to be. <laughs> um, but something with boxing and heart and inspiration, something like that I would love to do. Oh, that's really amazing. Yeah. Yeah. I have two questions. Sure. Did Tomo tell you to come to Pensacola because it was a good place to come? He, well, he, I definitely talked to him about it because he was here last year, yes. right? Yeah, and I was supposed to be here last year and I had to work. And so I was really bummed because all the Battlestar peeps were there. And I love all those guys. We're all still friends. Ed, Eddie almost is here yes. the last second, which was really awesome. Um, but yeah, Tom will talk very highly about Pensacola, and, and Mike, who, who runs it, was been generous enough to ask me to come and, and hang out. But Tom, Tom was at, in Vancouver right now with his new baby, yeah, and being an amazing dad. And I was just like, oh man, can you just drop the kid off or we can come with me? He's like, oh, I believe me, I want to go. We, we, we haven't done a con together, so hopefully that'll, that'll happen next year. My second question, yes. which I hope isn't going to spoil anything for oh, the Van Helsing. Let's see. No, no, no. It's, it's, so I'll, I'll word it nicely. So, you know, you, you, you signed up for one character. Were you happy when he kind of changed? I love that. Okay. And you without, know what? If they don't know, then too bad. Okay. Sorry. So we're talking about it. Yeah. 
Spoiler <laughs> alert. That's, that's kind of early. It's kind of early. And actually, I had that question yeah, know, too when you were talking about getting to play other yes. kind right. of characters and so, the good guy in set. I was like, I wonder if he knew that that was going to happen or was it just a happy okay. Were you excited when he found out? So yeah. here, here's, here, here's the thing about shows like that. Regardless of what your contract is, you can get killed at any time. Mm -hmm. So we sit there and every every episode that they ask me to come back and I'm like, awesome, I get to play again. And then, and because the first season was all about, um, you know, evil Julius, but I'm, when, when the director yells cut, I'm playing jokes, joking around, making everybody, and they were like, hmm, what if we flip him and get him to play this guy that we see in between takes? And so when they approached me about the, because the, the, for Van Helsing, the, the first flashback was my flashback, my storyline of when I, in 1936, and um, and telling them about my boxing background, and I am and I am a massive mama's boy. Me and my mom are like tight, and so they knew that, and so they incorporated that, um, and so I didn't know it was coming. So when I started reading it, when I started reading it and asking, like, where is he coming from now? Like, what's the idea? And you know, explaining the mythology that when you go from a vampire to a human. Uh, you remember everything that you did as a vampire. And that's traumatic for somebody going, I ate babies? I put a straw in the back of some dude and sipped them? You know, like that kind of stuff where then you start taking that on and, and that really made me feel like I could connect with the character in, in um, you know, this, if he's going to die, he's going to die doing something good for somebody. So that's what I really wanted to go. And I was, I was really excited when they... I found that out at the end of season two. Yeah. Cool, thank you. Yeah. yeah. Okay, going back to your music. Yeah. Uh, how many instruments do you play? And ha I, I, because I haven't been able to watch TV in a couple of years because Hurricane destroyed house TV, all that. Yeah. Anyway, um, but have you managed to get your music onto the soundtrack? Oh, no. I, I, see, for me, I was, uh, I'm a bass player. Uh -huh. So we just like... <laughs> Um, but I, so I, again, I'm, you know, I was talking to somebody else about it. I'm very much a team player, so I'm not great on my own. I, I, I excel when other people can work together and get that together. So for me, the band was more of a unit than me being a musician. I wasn't very good. I, I love what I loved to do was because we played metal. I loved to run around the stage. Like, to me, it was about the live show, and my, the guys in the band were going, you're playing the wrong note. <laughs> so, um, so for me, I, I just love playing with other musicians, so I don't have music of my own that I would put on the show, but I, I'm hoping that maybe season five they can write me into a band and you know, band a little bit more. <laughs> So, um, with Snowpiercer, just to go back to what's yeah. current and what, it has got a lot of buzz. A lot of buzz. How is it getting, um, you know, if we're talking about kind of the streaming kind of thing that's going on, what is it like creating a show where you don't even know, like, what the reception is going to be? I literally said this today. I go, I don't know if it's going to be a cat's or if it's going to oh, be, cats. you know what I mean? Like, I don't know if it's just going to shit the bed or not. But, <laughs> but, but the vibe that we have right now, and obviously the test screenings went well enough for us to get a second season. But we don't really know until it gets out there. So it's you know, a part of you goes, this is going to be the best show out there in 2020, or it isn't. So you just got to keep. Keep your feet on the ground and just enjoy the process. And and the thing is, this, this character's name. Okay, this is such a cool story, guys. So I went into audition for this, and it was a different name. And he was a, a a Polish heritage. And what I usually like to do is, uh, because I'm Serbian and it's Eastern European, I will improv in Eastern European a little bit. But they didn't know it was. They thought it was Polish when I improv. Oh. But I was actually improv in Serbian. And so I went to a few more callbacks and meetings with everyone. And then they said, OK, you, you have the role of this character. And I was like, I got to tell you something. 
So when I was improving in a different language, it was actually Serbian, it wasn't Polish, so I, I can't do that now because audiences will go, wait a second, that's not Polish. And so I go, how do you feel about changing the character to a Serbian so I can improv it? Which is hard to do to get people to change a character name, but I just thought I'd throw it out there. And he, uh, he goes, hmm, I like that idea. Says, that sounds great, but I want an unassuming name, a name that doesn't, uh, you know, because you look at somebody that's Eastern European, you think his name is Vlad, if he's mean, right? Um, hopefully there's not a Vlad in here. Um, but so I was immediately, my, my brother popped in my head, and my brother's name is Boyan. And so I just said, how about Boyan? He goes, hmm, I don't know, and, but his nickname is Bucky. I go, how about Bucky? He goes, oh, I like that. And he goes, well, my friend, his last name was Boscovich. I went, Bucky Boscovich, that's a great name. He goes, done. <laughs> so that's how this character's name came, and, and I get to keep my Eastern European accent and also throw in some Serbian. So they were really generous with letting me have that and letting me create my own character for the show. Wow, that's really, really cool. Mm -hmm. That's really cool. I, I think that it, that it sounds like you would just have a really uh, a deep interest in, in kind of doing something new and interesting. I, I definitely do. I, mean, I, I, I had a nice part on C, the new Apple Plus show with Jason Momoa, <laughs> and um, that, was, that was one of those characters where they let me experiment with not only the way I would look and how, how we could mold the character, into this vision, and but also of how I would speak, and and um, and just the relationship between Jason and I, and that's where that whole team dynamic um, I really love because I'm the type of guy that will throw a suggestion out, but take no, I don't if, if you don't have to use it, it's like spaghetti on the wall, whatever sticks that makes the story better or makes the situation better, I'm all for. So stuff like that, I really really enjoy. And I'd imagine that everyone, you've talked so highly about your, your castmates and, and, uh, and other people you've worked with, I imagine you have really glowing things to say about you as well. So it'll be interesting next time uh, someone comes to Pensacon that's working with you. Sure. <laughs> <laughs> no, he did a horrible practical joke on you. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> that's exactly it. <laughs> Any other questions? Yeah. So, I'm not great with uh, episode names, but in Battlestar Galactica, I think it was home, y'all were in a valley yeah. And fighting the Cylons and everything. Where was that valley? Um, that was in British Columbia, at a place called Kamloops. And in the summer, it's a desert. So it's, it's super hot. Nothing can grow there. And, and Vancouver is basically a rainforest. It's consistently raining. But in the summer, it gets really beautiful. And Kamloops was the perfect area to shoot that. We're actually shooting some episodes of Van Helsing up in that area. Yeah. Cool. Thank yeah. you. Yeah, absolutely. Um, any aspirations to do a romantic role? I would love to. See, here's one of the other things. I love. I, I would love to do something like that. I actually uh, started producing a film like probably my second year of acting called uh, Taming Tammy. So it was like a rom-com based on <laughs> Taming the Shrew. And... Um, and it was super fun, and I got Tom in on it. Tom was playing with my nose and stuff. It was really fun. But, but um, and it was a romantic comedy, and I got to play a really bad guitar in it. Yes. So that's the kind of stuff I, I dig and I would love to do. But again, it's putting it out there and, and things that are just going um, in, in a way where rom-coms aren't really that important to me right now. But if it came, I would jump on. Maybe in your last chance boxing movie, you can have some. Perfect. Some, some I would romance. love that. I would love that. We're giving him yeah. ideas, right? So we're looking yeah. at the stories. Yeah, just as long as it's not the Republic of Doyle type of. <laughs> oh, wow. It's Sometimes you just do what you gotta do to get out there. <laughs> that was funny. <laughs> so do you have any interest in writing? I do. I. I I, I wrote with a really good friend of mine, uh, Skalith in Essex, um, who has since passed, but he's one of the most talented people I've ever, I've ever worked with. And he would build these amazing worlds, sci-fi worlds, that I could never even fathom. But when it got to the dialogue aspect of it, that's where I excelled, and telling stories and switching the topics. And, and so I really love that aspect of it. Um, I think it's a big challenge for my
best piece that I want to get. Wow, that's amazing. Yeah. Amazing. So we have, uh, you've done sci-fi, you've done, you know, well, you haven't done too much romantic comedy yet. Yet. I'll work on that. Or the boxing. I've done some Christmas movies. Christmas movies. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I did one with David, David Hasselhoff. <laughs> wow. I love that. <laughs> um, where I played a, um, a, a, a Russian perfume heir. So very, I, like I bought Aspen type thing. Okay. Um, and Caroline Ray was in it. And from that movie, her and I became really great friends. She's absolutely hilarious. Um, Canadian girl and obviously a, a star. And I, I got to know her and we became really great friends. So the Christmas movie really gave me a lot of cool stuff. And there was one where I played a biker that sold a bunch of puppies. And, so I like puppies in my hand. I was like, of course I'm gonna say yes to this gig. I get to hang over puppies and ride a Harley? Come on. It, it sounds like you, you could definitely do, uh, excel at playing the, the, the big, nice guy. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. I, I like puppies, I like my mom. <laughs> okay, all right, all right. I like the beach. You guys switch it back now. It's like, what do you mean? <laughs> Like we have the incredible Hulk here when we come to the house. <laughs> <laughs> he looks, you look into me, then you get nice. Right, 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 right. So we have about 10 more minutes, so if you want to get your questions in, go for it. Yeah. So, any interest in directing an episode of Van Helsing if they come approach That's them? really interesting. Um, yes. And there was a few opportunities, and um, I, I end up working on other things, but it's definitely something um, I want to do because. Jonathan Scarf ended up directing a few ep episodes who plays Axel, and he was fantastic. Like, he's such a, even though he knows, he, he knows very much about the technical aspect of it with the camera moves, and it's, but he's so great with the actors, him being one, so he knows how to talk to us and, and get what he wants out of us. And that was, it's a joy when you have somebody like that directing you, and it inspires me to want to direct because, uh, you know, I watched them do it, and it's something I, I, I hope to do. Yeah? Well, it was more hope to see you come back to another Pensacola. Pensacola. I, I, I would do it in a heartbeat. Could be 100, Snowpiercer. Yeah. Okay. I would Convince love that. Convince the Snowpiercer guys to, to come on down. Yep. They would. They yeah. would. Um, yeah, I, I, love, I love being here. Like, I got out, saw McGuire's. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's quite a thing. Yeah, and, and Ga just, gallery night. Yeah, yeah, gallery night was great. Just seeing a lot of cool things, and, and everybody's just been extremely lovely. I'd, I'd love to come back. You didn't kiss the moose, did you? There's, there's a moose. Yes, you didn't kiss the moose. There's a moose on the wall, yes. and the tradition is to oh, kiss thought, the moose. I thought you meant just in general. Oh. <laughs> Up in Canada. Like, do I, yeah, I'll, I kiss moose in Canada. <laughs> <laughs> It's like what you do as a teenager. You guys get cows, we kiss moose. Oh, that was good. <laughs> never talk about it again. <laughs> uh, but no, I think maybe tonight I'll go kiss the moose. All right. I never said that in my life. Kiss the moose, kiss the moose. It's a, but his, his, the moose is worn down. He's been kissed yes. a lot. Right. Moose gets around. Moose gets around. My daughter's working tonight. I'll have to let her know. Yeah. So with the coronavirus, you know what? Well, how'd you catch the coronavirus? Uh, from a moose, a dead moose. In Pensacola. In Pensacola. Florida. Wow. That's good. We're always on the map for strange things. Now. Right. <laughs> so no, I definitely have been having a great time here. You guys have been great. So do you have any other uh, conventions coming up? Um, I don't. I don't have anything. We go right into... Um, so I, I worked on Snowpiercer, which was an amazing, like, one of those days where it's like, we have so much to do, and we don't know if we're going to get it, but let's give it a shot. And we ended up getting it all. And then I flew here, and then I go back to sh finish up um, Snowpiercer. And right when Snowpiercer is, is done, back on that housing. So it's been, it's been tough to... Get some free time, but believe me, I'm not complaining. I'm, <laughs> I'm loving it. So it's no, where Snowpiercer from? Van Vancouver. So I'm perfect. Ah. It's Vancouver, Vancouver. Yeah. Nice. Yeah. Ah. There's oh yeah, good. Yeah, if you came across somebody that's never seen you or heard of you, and you told them or referenced them to go 
to a certain particular role you've done? Mm -hmm. What would be the first thing you would tell them? Oh, what a great question. Um, just because Van Helsing has been so, like, it's, it's shown every part of me, um, that's something I would definitely target towards people. But there was a film that I did, um, director David Oliver had a film called um, Personal Effects, where I played, and it was one of those ones because I was getting cast as the big strong dude, but it, it, was, a, it was a role of a mentally challenged individual that was accused of killing Ashton Kutcher's sister in the movie. And um, so it was this just simple man with some disability, and, and I really wanted to have people look at me in a totally different way. So I, I studied a lot with that character and went into the audition. And I, and I didn't make it into the first two rounds because they came in and said, okay, give me all your best actors for this role. And I wasn't considered in the first two lists. And they still didn't find the guy, so I, I was like the last person to go in. And I remember being very like emotionally raw because I, I knew that this was a moment, regardless if I got the gig or not, that I was gonna reveal a little bit more of my soul than I usually do because I'm playing tough guys. And it was quite emotional for me. And so going into the room and having these auditions, uh, I felt like I was being seen for the first time, if that makes any sense. Um, especially, I'll never forget it when, when he was said, okay. What, what I feared was, thanks for coming, as your wife big snot in tears. <laughs> it's like, oh, okay, bye. But when he, when he, when he saw the, um, the character, then he started working with me, which made me even more dropped in for the character. And I ended up booking the gig, and that was something that was so special to me because it was something that, you know, we're telling a very heartfelt story, and they believe in me as this character that I had to really work on and literally reveal a piece of my soul. That's the only way I think I could have done the role. I couldn't have just acted it, you know? So that's probably one of my most proud gigs, for sure. Wow, that was a, that was a great question. Yeah, that's great. <laughs> I'm going to put that one in my back pocket. <laughs> so we have five more minutes, so if you have any more questions, feel free. Yeah. Just a quick one. You were mentioning your upcoming studio. You know, part of the success of a studio like that, of course, is a cool name. Have y'all thought about that? Have you come up with something that you really like? We, we did. There's a few floating around. The one that I like and that we're, we're using right now, and hopefully we'll keep it, is Wonder Light Studios. That's yeah. good. And, and Manitoba is known for its uh, Borealis lights, so we've kind of put that in there. Yeah. That's super cool. Putting it out in the air, so thank you. <laughs> thank you for that question. So we, what can we look forward to? We've talked about some here, so you have other films that are coming up. What's something that you're excited about that we, that we should maybe keep our ears peeled that you might be able to tell us about? Hmm, I mean, this movie chain was really something I'm really excited about. It was, we shot it, um, Snowpiercer was generous enough to let me offer a few weeks to shoot this film, but it was me opposite a 13 year old boy and and I'm chained up in this warehouse and he, okay, I gotta tell you this because it's so, so cool. So, this 13 year old boy who's been physically uh, abused at home and mentally abused and bullied at school. He uh, is just trying to get through life, but he has solace in gardens. He loves gardening. And the parallels is he gets to control what grows and what doesn't. And what he doesn't get to control in the real world. So he can decide if a plant lives beautifully or it dies. So it's this interesting dichotomy with that. And he bullies chase him into a warehouse and he bumps into a dead body. And he's so curious of the dead body. Then he hears a chain and he hears it getting louder and louder. And then all of a sudden I show up right here and I say, I'm thirsty. And then he runs off and he comes back. And I said, hey, look, just let me out of this chain and I'll be out of my way. Like, out of your way, I'm all good. If you can get the keys out of that, get that guy's pocket, I'm gone. So he grabs the keys, and I'm like, yep, yep, throw it over. And then he goes and puts water on this side. Like, I haven't had water in, 
in the days. And as I go for it, the chain gets taut, and then he sprays a semicircle around me so he knows how far to go. And then he just says, uh, I'm going to take care of you now. And he gives me the water, and I'm like, this kid is kidnapping. So he's treating me like a garden. And all the, the stuff that happens inside and outside of that relationship, every time it comes back to the warehouse, is really, really amazing. And the dialogue is amazing. But trying to build a relationship with someone that you don't know if you trust or not, and how can you break that down to the point where he can give me the keys and I can get out of here? Wow. So it's been, interesting it's one. so interesting. And and Tyson, uh, the, uh, sorry, uh, Titus Hackle wrote, wrote the script and. I'm really, really excited for people to see it. So when can we, when can we, uh... I think it'll be, I'm, I'm hoping it's going to start with the festival circuit. Okay. And then, uh, get a theatrical release. Wow. Yeah. That, that gave me chills, I'm just hearing yeah. you describe that. Yeah. <laughs> Pardon me? What's the name of it? Chained. Chained. Yeah. Chained. Everyone keep, keep your eyes out. Keep your eyes out for it. It's very cool. Amazing. So we have time for one more question. If anyone wants to ask a question? Yeah, yeah man. Marvel or DC, and what superhero would you love to play in a movie that has it? <laughs> Marvel or DC, DC, and take Jason Momoa's job. Oh. Yeah. 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 Fuck that guy. Yeah. <laughs> you have to box him or wrestle him for it. Yeah, yeah, we'll fight for it. Believe me, we've had a few drunken fights. So. <laughs> That's a great question. Well, I, I just want to thank you so much Thanks for being for so generous me. with your time with us and, and, and having a wonderful conversation with us. So everyone, you. please give it up for Mr. Alex. Thank you. Thank you guys. Really appreciate it. Yeah, go ahead. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, they're, the, they'll get mad. The table, yep. I've got, I've, I'm, I'm new to this, so yep. I, like, I take pictures and sign and then. What? The little Nazi over there gets me. <laughs> so goes, you no! Go find us a phone. Go to my center. table. Yeah, go to the table. That's right. And uh, I'll if, sign the table. and the next up is going to be uh, Justice League voice actors.